back to what we were talking about yesterday night. This is so important because the word of God brings life. You know, I remember speaking yesterday night about how God will write on the tablets. The first time God wrote on the tablets, I made some distinction about that writing. I said the tablets belong to God. It is not a human enterprise. The tablet was from God. The material on which God wrote was from God himself. And then I said how the writing was from God. The Bible says this very clearly, both the tablets and the writing was from God. But then Moses as he came down, what is the tablet representing? It represents the very instruction that God was giving to his people for the future. But as Moses came down from the mountain after receiving that beautiful glorious tablet, he saw his people sinning against God and breaking the very law that was recorded on that tablet. And the Bible says he was moved with displeasure as he broke that tablet. And I said yesterday night a statement. In fact, Moses breaking that tablet saved his people because there's no transgression, but there's no law. He removed that so that the people, otherwise God would have consumed his people right there, right then. But that's also what many Jewish sages have believed. Let me go ahead. So here is the first tablet given by God, broken, and everything is gone. But this Sunday, that's where the whole message evolved. I heard in my spirit that God is going to write the second tablet. The three words that came out of Sunday's sermon. Number one, they will be re revealing. Number two, there will be an empowerment. Number three, there will be a release. So can we say those words? There's going to be a revealing, reveal, empowerment, and release. And I believe with all of my heart, as we go through this week and the, the weeks that are coming up, there will be move of God in our midst that's going to be so powerful, people are going to receive very personally, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Come with expectation. God will never say something without having an intention to fulfill it. So I strongly, with all of my heart, believe people who are weak and people who have felt absolutely everything falling apart. There's going to be an empowerment from God that will change your life for, forever. How many of you know we can have hundreds of sermons Thousands of teachings, but nothing can help us as much as God himself empowering us by his Holy Spirit. So we will be focusing on that in the next few days. And then, of course, God will take us to the third part of it, which is release. But I want to say this. Yesterday night after the sermon, after the meeting, I was just going out and three young people spontaneously spoke out. Very spontaneously. They said, you know what? All of them together said, we are just wondering that we could bring something like a, a tablet, something representing a tablet, maybe a whiteboard or something as an act of faith and bring it to a church saying, God, write on it. I thought that was beautiful. So when this message is going to be wrapped up, we will have an exercise of it. Amen. It's not mandatory. Even if you come empty handed, that's fine. But some of you believe that God will surely write on empty tablets. You are going to bring something representing your faith. Amen. Come on. Amen. So we will have a lot of people and let God, when God sees your faith. You know, I always say prophetic words demands faith actions. Amen. How many of you know in the Old Testament some prophets were asked to do things in order to represent the message, things that we would never imagine of doing it. Do you know that? Some of them were asked to carry a yoke because God said, my people are going to go under captivity. You know, they had to represent to the people the message. In fact, they themselves became the message. And that's what a message should do to us. 
We don't just listen to the message, we become the message. You imagine this, if I'm a preacher preaching on, on being cheerful, and I walk around always grumpy, I'm never carrying that message. You know, my message should be carried the way I start to behave. Can I get an agreement here? So I'm going to request you, if God leads you, we'll have a day. It's not mandatory. If you are led, do something. Bring a tablet, bring something and say, God, right. I said a couple of instructions. I said this, number one. The second time, it was Moses chiseling out the, the stone. But how many of you know, God again wrote on it. And I want to make the first statement for those of you who are not here yesterday. If you truly trust the Lord, He will rewrite with His own finger what was broken in your life. There could be somebody saying, God, I have had so many plans that you had in a plan over my life and I knew that this was my design. For some reason, I broke everything. Everything went downhill. Everything went down the slope and I don't even know what, what I'm doing now. I have got a promise from the throne room of heaven. God says, I'm going to rewrite the original plan upon your life. If you believe that, can you shout an agreement? Amen. <laughs> Number two, you know, so it'll be God himself writing it with his own finger. Not something new, but something that was what he had written in the original the first time. He didn't change it. He wrote it again. So there's going to be a reinforcement, a re reiteration of what God had already planned for your life. Number two, I said this. This time, God said to Moses, you bring the stone. There's a certain preparation. I'm not going to provide the stone. You bring the stone. But when you bring the stone, this is something that you need to understand. There cannot be anything written on the stone. You cannot bring the stone of your life, of your family, of your own future, of your ministry and say, God, this is what I think I should do. This is what I think I need to do. And then God put your glorious fiery signature on it. It looks good. That's not the way it's going to work. If you are going to approach God, you're going to come with this certain sense. God, I am coming with an empty tablet. You can write on my family. You can write on my future. You can write about my life, of, about my future, about my ministry. How many of you can truly believe with all of your heart? Whatever God writes will be more beautiful than you can ever imagine. Only those people, come on. Can I, can I get a witness here? Whatever God writes will always be more glorious. Amen. Amen. Now let me go ahead as I have to, this is just a recap. Let me go further into something new for tonight. Can we come to the book of, of uh, Exodus chapter 34? There's going to be something very powerful. I felt the Lord speak to the very inner chambers of my heart. So let me just communicate that to you. Exodus 34. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first. And I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first table, which thou breakest. Let me go ahead. Please go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. And be ready in the morning. Everybody say, ready. If God has to write something in your heart, you cannot come without an expectation. You have to be ready. Come on. You cannot just sit there in a, in, a, in a casual kind of an expression and say, God, I, I don't know why I'm here. If you've got something to do, will you please do it? No, no. You have to be specific and be ready for what God is about to do. And one thing I want to speak over this 21 days of fasting and prayer, be ready, be ready, be ready. Because God is about to do something. God is about to write something. Let me go ahead. And so be ready in the morning and go ahead, please. And, and come unto Mount Sinai and present thyself there to me in the top of a mount. Let me go ahead. And no man shall come up with it. This is not a collective call. Now I want to understand for some reason for the last two days, even in the morning session, God has been speaking that God is going to call people individually to receive their commission from God. You cannot hide within 
the context of everybody coming together, getting excited. That's not where God is calling you. God is calling you individually to receive a mandate from God. You cannot rely on somebody else's anointing or experience when you face a mighty giant like Goliath in the future. You need to stand firm and say, God is my God. He has spoken to me. How many of you know, when David stood before Goliath, he didn't have anything else to rely upon. He looked at Goliath, the mighty giant, and said, I know my God is able. Because the last time, he delivered me from the mouth of a bear and of a lion. You need your personal testimony when you face the giants of your life. And this fasting and prayer, you're not going to say, my wife's God or my uncle's God. Oh, my father's God, or oh, thine church God, you're going to say, my God, he's a speaking God, and he spoke to my life. Come on. Can I get a witness somewhere here? How many of you are happy to say, he's my God? How many of you can say, he's a speaking God? My God spoke unto me. Let me tell you, it will not be in the sense of a general approach. It will be the specificity of you coming to God and receiving a word for your life. On the tablets of your life, a word from God. Oh, come on. Whew, hallelujah. I was saying, I'm using this terminology quite often. Don't get offended, please. I said recently while in preaching in some of the youth conferences in the United States, I, I, I was so prompted to say this and I said this. I said, when I see some of our young people, they look to me like spiritual zombies. Have you seen zombies? They don't. It's like, it's a frightening sight. They don't even know, where, there's, there's no direction. There's a sense of nothing inside. Let me tell you, we don't have spiritual zombies in our church. We have people on which God, on whom God has given his verdict, he given his mandate, given his message. Come on, you're not a spiritual zombie. You are a chosen vessel of God, filled with the power of God. If you believe that, shout an agreement, amen. Every vessel has to be filled. Oh, come on. This is a cry of God's heart this time. Let me go ahead. As he came to a mountain, we thought in, in, a, in, a, in a sense of separation from everything. This is an individual call. Let me go ahead. The next verse. He carried this. How many of you know to carry those stones? Somebody said it would be at least 100 pounds of weight. Carrying the stone and walking to the mountain. He doesn't even know what's going to happen. But he knows God is faithful. Let me tell this 21 days of fasting doesn't make sense to everybody. Think about it. This is the warmest month of, 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 of our calendar. It is a very good time for people to travel. Think about it. You know, you get five or six months of winter and then you get the summer. The churches that don't even have Sunday service they cancel it but we have some strange people they decided to come not just on a Sunday but every day you know honestly I used to miss India in especially my preaching in India but after the summer I don't feel I miss India anymore it's so hot here I've got two or three fans you know what doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to the people around in the city. It will not even make sense to many pastors what you're doing in this place. Morning and evening. What are you doing? Coming every day. You could have been in some good place like Florida. No, Florida is very hot. Some other place where you could have migrated into a place of, of comfort. But instead of that, you're coming here. But let me make this statement, and I want somebody to rejoice. Everybody that came with a certain sense of expectation, carrying an empty tablet even though it was difficult, I want to give you a promise. Before this fasting prayer is over, you will have the writing of God upon the tablet. If you Come on, if you believe that, can you make a shout of joy in the house of the Lord? Come on, hallelujah. You will not go empty. You will not go with an empty stab. You will slap. You will not go back empty with an empty tablet. You are going to go back with a tablet written by the finger of God. God's writing upon your life that can change your life forever. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Every day is scary. But how many of you know? Can I get that also out in the open? How many of you know? When God writes his plan over my life this is worth it this coming is not a waste 
It is not a religious dispensing of a duty. It is absolutely worthy. It is absolutely powerful. I don't think it's a waste. When God writes his plan upon my life, all my coming in the morning and in the evening and spending these days with my God, it is worth it. How many of you are joyful to say that? Would you please make your joy known? Can you make your joy known? Come on, hallelujah. Can you be... Oh, hallelujah. It is joyful because you're not going back. Think about it. You're not going back with a tablet that is empty. You're going back with a tablet. With the finger of God. Think about it. He's carrying. He's carrying. He's carrying that, that weight of those tablets but nothing on it. But here is something I want to speak. I hope you will bear with me for the next five or ten minutes. Because this is the crux of the matter. What happens when God does not come on the first day, or the second day, or the third day? To write. And you are sitting there with the tablets. Nothing on the first day. Nothing on the second day. The tenth day. Now let me see how many of you are joyful. Forty days, nothing. Can you imagine? He didn't even move. He's sitting there with a tablet. The weight of the tablet. Nothing on the first day. But the only thing that he knows... If God said it, nothing happened. You know, I see people get so disappointed after one waiting. After the first day. After the second day. But this man is sitting 40 days, not just in the morning and the evening, the whole time. With the tablets and no writing. Instead of that, God did something. Please read. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there. I want to give you a promise. If you believe him, you're not going to sit there alone. Can I get a witness somewhere here? The Lord will stay with you. How many of you can say, God, even if my plan is not fulfilled, even if my prayer is not answered, if you are going to stay with me this 21 days, I will stay joyfully in your presence. Only those people, can you lift up your voice and shout an agreement, amen. God, I will stay with you joyfully. Amen. Nothing happened. And proclaim the name of the Lord. What is the name of the Lord? The name of the Lord means God is revealing his character. Can I make an assertion of faith? A very strong statement. In this fasting and prayer, believe me, you will have your prayers answered. But before you have your prayers answered, some of you are going to know who your God is. Some of you are going to know the God that you serve. If you're happy, can you lift up your voice? You are going to have a knowledge of your God. You are going to have an understanding about your God. You will know that your God is not like any other God. He is above every other God. His name is powerful. He is a God of the beginning and the end. He is God Almighty. He is a faithful God. He is a merciful God. Let me tell you something I see in my spirit. After this fasting prayer is over, when my people shall go out of this place, let them be confronted by any form of evil. Let them be hit by the powers of darkness. Let them go through testing time. They're going to stand on the ground and say I know who my God is he's a faithful God come on somebody somebody lift up your voice and shout an amen I know who my God is I believe everybody that ministers must know who their God is. Before you know who God is, don't get into the ministry. Every preacher should know who God is. Every singer must know who their God is. Every believer must know who the God is. Every church president and secretary and committee members and local board body members must know who their God is. You know what? This fasting prayer, God is going to reveal who He is. You're going to have a personal understanding of who your God is how many of you want to say God the writing can wait let me know who you are oh come on 
God says, I could have given you the answer the first day. I could have given you the answer the second day. I could have given you the answer the third day. But you would have gone out and said, you know what? I got my prayer answered. That will be it. And that excitement will stay only for some time. But God says, before you go out of this place, you're not just going to go out with the excitement and say, God, you answered my prayer. You're going to go out and say, I saw my God. I heard my God. I felt His presence. Oh, come on. You know, because I'm on... I'm also preaching and ministering, doing fasting and prayer. I was planning in my mind how I have to face this and, and be slow at least in the beginning and stand behind this, this stand and preach quietly. But whenever I talk about my God, my feet moves. My hands move. I cannot hold it. I cannot help it. I want to declare as mighty as I can. My God is a mighty God. My God is my healer. My God is a merciful God. Those of you know who your God is. Can you shout and agree him an amen? Can you lift? Oh, come on. Hallelujah. I mean, you need to know who your God is. And God comes down and says, these are the beautiful things that he says. You know what? Moses is getting a new glimpse of who God is. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, Yahweh, the Lord God. That means Yahweh, Elohim, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and in truth. I want you to know, before this fasting prayer is over, one thing you're going to know about your God, your God is merciful. You might have fumbled, you might have stumbled, you might have gone away from him, you might have walked away from his presence, but I want to declare this evening, my God is merciful, my God is merciful, my God is merciful, my God is merciful. They're going to know that is gracious. Look at all those words. It put together is a God of goodness. So long suffering, gracious, abundant in goodness and truth. Let me go ahead, next to us. Keeping mercy for thousands and forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that, by, 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 that will by no means clear the guilty. I like that word. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. You know what? God will not overlook guilty or guilt. But praise God. The Israelites had one way to circumvent it. They found an offering called the guilt offering. When you give a guilt offering unto God, God will overlook guilt. And let me make this very clear. Jesus Christ became the ultimate offering. And this evening I can say even the guilty can come into the presence of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Even if you're guilty, come on somebody, if you truly believe that, can you shout an agreement, amen. Even if you're guilty, even if your conscience says you're guilty, you're guilty, you're guilty, you're guilty. You don't have to run away from God. Jesus paid the price. He took every form of punishment for your sins upon the cross. And this evening, because of Jesus Christ, you go. God can deal even with the guilty. And let me tell you, my God is a merciful God. Let me read verse number 8, please. This is, this is the most beautiful thing. I love this. I love this. Here is a man holding up the tablets. One day, second day, nothing. It's so heavy. All by himself. Is he, you know, his fasting was a fasting without even... Drinking water. His body might be giving away. But God said he will write on the tablets. He's waiting. And nothing happened. God reveals who he is. I believe for a moment. Moses forgot. About the tablets. He bowed down. And worshipped him. And I want to make a declaration. Some of you came into this meeting expecting an answer. Before you get your answer, you will go out as a worshiper. Can I get a witness here? What is he trying to say? God, even if you don't give me an answer, till I get my answer, I'm going to worship you. 
I love worshiping you. I delight in worshiping you. I'm going to lift up my voice and say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Even before my answer is through, I will delight in worshiping God. Here is adoration going before supplication. Come on, hallelujah. His worship to God is going before his prayer. And let me make this very clear. How many of you want to say, God, let your writing come the day you have chosen. But when I get a chance in to, be, to be in your presence, when I know who you are, I'm going to forget about my need. I'm going to forget about why I'm here. And I'm going to simply worship you. Only those people are willing to say, I find delight in worshiping my God. Only those people lift up your voice and shout a hallelujah. You're going to worship him. Come on, lift up your voice. God wants some worshipers to rise up from this place. Can I say this? This is powerful. God says, before you get your healing, you're going to worship the healer. Before you get your miracle, you're going to worship the miracle giver. It's going to be a worship of faith. It's going to be a worship knowing who God is. How many of you are willing to say, God, I'm so sure that you will fulfill your word. I don't have to worry about it. In your time, you will do it. But right now, I know who you are. And I want to give you a, a beautiful worship. Only those people who want to do that. Can you express yourself? Can you give a Lord a worship? You didn't receive your miracle. You didn't receive your healing, but you don't want to hold back your worship to God. Come on. Oh, can I, you know, I, 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 I'm sorry. You know, I, I don't know what else to do. I'm so excited. I want to fall on this place and say, you are good. Can I get somebody whom I can include in my club? The club of the insane. They have not received their miracle, but they know who their God is. Come on, hallelujah. They've not got their healing, but they know who their God is. They've not got their restoration, but they know who their God is. Can somebody who know their God is give a Lord? Give a Lord a mighty worship. I don't care when my miracle will come, but I know who my God is. He's worthy of my worship. He's a good God. He's a mighty God. He's a living God. He's a merciful God. And I want to give him worship. Ooh. Can I get somebody to join? You know what? If you see me getting excited, bear with me. You know why? When the moment Moses heard the word merciful, he understood something that others wouldn't understand. He understood if God reveals himself as merciful, that means I have hope for my people. They're not going to die. They're not going to be destroyed. God has revealed himself merciful. Let me ask you, forget about what is about to write. He will do it according to what he said. But how many of you can say, it is his mercy that I'm here tonight. It is his... Come on, how many of you can testify? I'm worshipping, I'm singing, I'm lifting up my hands, I'm praising God because I know He's a merciful God. Only those people who have experienced the mercy of God will you shout at the top of your voice a worship unto God. He's a merciful God. Come on, somebody lift up your voice. I don't know about tomorrow. I don't know when my miracle will come. But I know my family is here today. My children are alive today. I am alive today. Because God is merciful. Oh, come on, somebody. Somebody lift up your voice. You're not going to just say, God, I didn't get my writing as yet. I didn't get my writing as yet. I'm not disappointed as yet, Lord, because I saw you. I heard you. I know who you are. Even when my miracle will wait, I'm going to give you a worship. Only those people. Come on, somebody. Release it right now. Somebody just release it right now. Don't hold it back anymore. It was not just a silent worship. He fell on his face. He went on his knees and worshiped the Lord. Somebody make... Somebody give a Lord an expressive worship. Somebody give a Lord a profound worship. Come on, hallelujah. 
I'm worshiping you. Oh, this is powerful. God says, before I write on your life, I want to see worship in your life. Before I write on your family, I want to see you as a worshiper. Before I write on your children's life, I want to see you as a worshiper. Can somebody join with Moses and give alone an expressive? Those who worship me must worship me with everything. With their heart, with their mind, and with their full strength. Can you give a Lord an expressive worship for who He is? Come on, hallelujah. He's a good God. He's a merciful God. He's a God of goodness. Hallelujah. Those of you standing, don't sit. We're about to stop. Close the session. But I want to declare this. This fasting and prayer, God is not going to raise up some people who say name it and claim it. Just say it and it's there. Of course, we will have a lot of naming and claiming by faith. But let me say, that's not the end of it. Even if you have to wait for a day. If nothing happens on the next day, if nothing happens on the third day, let God take his time to write. But in the meantime, I want to worship him. I want to give him worship. Can I get somebody? Can somebody declare this? Lord, you deserve my worship for all that you have done already in my life. Come on, hallelujah. You deserve my worship, Lord. Now listen. I heard a word from the Lord. With this, I'm going to close. If you want to move out, you can move out after that. We'll have about five minutes of prayer. I heard a word, f- word from the Lord. I'm not done. I'll continue tomorrow. This is what I heard from the Lord. Are you ready for this? The Lord told me very clearly, when my writing comes upon my people, this is what's going to happen. 34 and verse number 28 onwards. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And wrote upon the table, tables the words of the covenant the ten commandments God himself wrote we we spoke about it yesterday night next word and it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses hand when he came down from the mount that Moses didn't even know it that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him God said tell my people I'm writing something on the tablets of their lives but because I'm writing it when they come out they're not coming out gloomy downcast and oppressed by the devil they're coming out with my glory with my glory with my glory those of you can receive this promise, do something. Come on. If you want to move, move. If you want to receive this promise, I'm talking about a mighty anointing. When God writes upon your life, your life will be descriptive of a divine glory. God wants to give you glory. When people see you, they will see glory upon your life. The old shame is over. I want everybody to stand up, please. One of the opposite of glory in the Bible is the word shame. And I want to declare this as loud as I can. When God writes upon the tablets the shame of your life, of your family, will be gone and you will walk with glory upon your life. If you believe that, can you put your hands together? Give a Lord a shout of praise in the house of a Lord. You will walk with the glory of a Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. I want to speak this as a prophetic word. My children... As you waited before me, one of these days, 
the writing will be upon you. With my own finger, I will write the words about your future, about your family. And God says, until then, I'm going to reveal to you who I am. And you will worship me because of who I am. I am merciful. I'm a glorious God. I'm a gracious God. And God says, the time is coming when you walk out of my presence with a new writing on your life. God says, everybody that talks to you, everybody that comes to you, everybody that spends time with you, everybody whose hand you will shake, they will know beyond a shadow of doubt that the presence of God is upon you. You're not the old person. You're not the old family you're carrying God's glory can I get a witness somewhere here somebody who believes what God is speaking somebody who can say a shout of amen even before it is done hallelujah to the Lamb of God oh get ready get ready get ready get ready get ready the Lord says, I'm going to change the shape of your family. I'm going to change your shape. I'm going to change the way people see you. You're not going to be an object of pain and shame. You're not going to be seen as a woman, as a man, as a family attacked and oppressed by the powers of devil. You're not going to carry the mark of evil spirit upon your life. You're going to carry God's glory upon your life, upon your family. Those of you who believe that, can you give a Lord your personal praise? Come on, your personal shout of faith in the house of the Lord. Can you do it?